distinction between martial art and fighting. There can and will be some overlap, but you don't have to be a fighter to be a martial artist. You can be, but it has to do with the intention. Fighters like to fight. That is what they like to do. And there's um, the object when you're a fighter is to win the fight, to emerge victorious in whatever the contest may be. A martial artist is concerned about the art in the martial art. That is seeking this, the essence of what is going on in the, the physicality, in the energetics, in the, the shifting states of beingness within the martial art. And martial arts, some martial artists, myself included, we don't fight. I used to box, but uh, I don't, uh, you know, I prefer not to. And higher level martial arts, you try to find a way around actually hurting someone. That's the, uh, that's the, the higher ideal. Um, you ideally know how to take care of yourself, how to defend yourself, and how to be able to handle situations as they come up. And the more you have, the more skill you have in that, the less the necessity to actually go out and show what you, what you got. So there's, uh, so there's a distinction the, between that. So a love-based martial art is a radical departure from the way that <coughs> most martial arts are taught. Generally, the a, um, most martial arts are, are learned basically by simulating an attack from a hostile entity who you then either armor yourself against or you you develop weapons to pierce their armor. And that's the basic, uh, basic idea behind that, going back to uh, the dawn of the caveman smashing each other's heads in. <coughs> and um, the idea of a love-based martial art is that we are going to flip that around and find a way to utilize the power that comes from experiencing a love-based state. A love-based state allows you to move to a higher state of integration, of coherence, which then increases your, your power, your effective power, but also it clarifies your mind and it calms your nervous system so that your reactions are not coming from the primitive reptile brain the uh, paleo-mammalian brain, but they're actually coming from your higher consciousness. So, uh, there are a variety of arts which, which move in that direction, and I think it's, it's something that, is, that people in general are recognizing that as a, as a good thing, because the, uh, uh, being able to kick the snot out of somebody is, not all is cracked up to be. There is, there are always um, repercussions for any kind of activity like that. So learning how to to handle a situation without compromising your own integrity in the, in the process is, a, is an important skill. The as several people indicated there is a broader application in our lives. Once you are able to see that this handles, oh, this handles even dire physical situations, then you can apply it to the, the angry boss, the, uh, you know, the, the child throwing a tantrum or whatever. The, you can learn how to deal with that just by changing your state of being and changing your energetic response to the situation. So the, it's more along the lines of uh, you know, the Jedi Knight where you, you, know, you don't have to go in there and, and, and break bones, you just say these are not the doors you're looking for. And that's, the, uh, that's the, the higher level. How we get there is, uh, is an interesting part of the journey and it's a transformative part of the journey because it, one of the tools we use is, is an exercise called the edge. And what this does is it 
gently provokes your reptile brain response and allows you to go to that place where you feel that, that contraction and then you get alternatives what to do with it whenever that happens.